big bills. All right, now the Gen Zs have been, as they call it, injecting, and one of the ramifications or food of injecting was that the finance bill that will govern us in the financial year 2024-2025 was not assented. Now, there was a lacuna there. How does the government operate? Because it operates within frameworks and budgets. And that's why there's been the introduction of the supplementary 20, and this is, these are just estimates, supplementary estimates number one, 2024, 2025. Quite a number of changes that are being suggested. First of all, just from the overall perspective, is that ministerial expenditure, this has reduced by close to 6.6%. It has changed by 156 billion shillings. So this is a location to our ministry's office of the, the executive office of the president, the deputy president, all these different ministries. That has reduced from the original was 2.37 trillion shillings. It's changed to 2.22 trillion shillings. Now, let's talk about consolidated funds because that's where the salaries of uh, government employees comes from pensions, comes from when you talk about debt, payment of interest, it also comes from the consolidated fund. And that particular budget for uh, consolidated fund has actually increased, has gone up 2% uh, up uh, from uh, the original 1.21 trillion shillings to 1.23 trillion shillings. And this, of course, is increased obligations by the government. Now, county government, in regards to these estimates, and remember, these are just estimates. Uh, we'll ha they'll have to, that they are in parliament. Kenyans will come and participate and give their feedback. Uh, in regards to county, the shareable revenue original was 400 billion shillings. Uh, that is equitable share for this financial year. And the supplementary estimate one suggests 410.95 billion shillings uh, towards equitable share. So overally, the budget says that the original was 3.99 trillion shillings and the supplementary estimate, uh, it's brought it down slightly by 1.9% uh, to 387 trillion shillings. Now let's look at some of the specifics. Uh, in regards to suggestions and the cuts that we've seen, State Department for Trade, MSMEs and Investment, Industry and Cooperatives, the Appropriations Bill 2024 had allocated them 32 billion shillings, supplementary budget, um, that is estimates one, it's allocated them 28 billion shillings. That is uh, actually 4 billion shillings cut. And this is dominant across this particular document. If you can take a look at a different uh, slide, where we have also agriculture, food security, State Department for Livestock Development, Blue Economy, Fisheries. Uh, initially, it was allocated 72 billion shillings. Now that has been cut by close to uh, 7.2 billion shillings to 64.8 billion shillings. So this is something that is happening. We are in an austerity environment. And that's why even as Gen Z dance Anguka Nayo, it's also happening in our budget. I want to have this discussion with none other than Dr. David Kabata. Uh, Dr. Terry, good to see you. We live in a very unprecedented times. I don't know when last did we have uh, where a finance bill was not assented to. Now, this has left us in a very interesting place. Clarify for us, where are we as a country and our budgets? So thank you, Noah. I think this is one of the questions that Kenyans have been asking. Now, because the finance, finance bill was rejected and the, gov the, the, the president assented to the budget estimate bill or what we call the appropriation bill, what happens because the budget was for, for 4 trillion or 3.9 trillion, mm -hmm. but now here we have a finance bill that was supposed to actually lay 344 billion so mm -hmm. that we can actually make 3.9 trillion. But it has been rejected. So there is a there, 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 there was actually supposed to be a difference of 344 billion. Mm -hmm. And what the government said, I, th I remember the president saying that, is that they were going to actually borrow some money. I think that is 150, about 156 billion, and then bring in these cuts that you are talking about, mm -hmm. so that they can be able to salvage the other part of the budget because the budget was already there, but the finances now 
are below by uh, uh, there's a difference of 344 billion okay. so that is why you see some of these cuts so that we can be able to to accommodate the 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 the, the, the difference okay yes uh, now the implications of this because initially one of the issues that we've cried about in the country is living within our means okay so budget within your means and our budget has been ever growing uh, looking at the revenue potential, of course, ever growing, but not at the same rate. So once we see these cuts, it's an austerity environment, as I've mentioned earlier on. What are the implications on the ground, uh, especially for government, uh, for government obligation matters to do with debt? What does this mean? I think, you no, know, we have always been saying that the, this country's problem is not actually finance. It is the expenditure part. And one of the reasons as to why we have a problem of expenditure is because we live beyond our means when it comes to budgeting. And therefore, for me, I don't even think that we needed to hype some of these, some of these cuts a lot because remember one of the, one of the experts, one of the experts told us that the government loses a lot of, misuses or wastes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And at one time we were told that the government loses about two billion per day, which comes to about six hundred billion per per year. And for me, I think that all what we need to do is to seal some of those loopholes where we waste the money, mm -hmm. and we get all this money that we are, we require for some of these parts of the budgets. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge is that what, what the government has done is that they have actually cut some of these most some of the most important areas you can see the agriculture mm -hmm. they have actually reduced the budget for agriculture and you've actually talked about food security we have so many departments in fact the, the ministries alone we have they have actually reduced the budget by 6.6 percent mm -hmm. which is actually a big big portion of the budget so that they can be able to accommodate the the the, 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 the whatever they are not getting from the finance bill mm -hmm. so I think it is something that is going to affect some of these areas. I remember the president saying that what they did is that they tried as much as possible to look at the most important areas, such as the JSS, JSS the junior secondary schools, mm -hmm. where you actually need the teacher so that the system can continue. And they decided that some of those most important areas should they should they should actually go on with them, which I think that was supposed to be the most important things and then cut budgets on some of those areas that are not important like okay. some of these travels that you see mm -hmm. with our ministers everywhere yeah. to benchmark even in uganda <laughs> i think <laughs> by dms yes <laughs> you know but uh, i've seen state house for example uh the budget for state house mm. uh initially it was um around nine billion nine point four mm billion now it's been reduced to 4.3 billion yes. almost 50 percent cut uh slightly over 50 percent cut office executive office of the president mm -hmm. uh, initially was 4.23 billion now it's been reduced marginally uh to 3.58 yes. uh 38 percent office of the deputy president also 44 percent cut from 4.89 to 2.69 billion mm -hmm. but my issue is the issue of um the way the government spends its money, as you've said, yes. we have an issue with spending. The cuts. Yes. Recurrent expenditure, 2.1% drop. Yes. But development expenditure is 16.4% drop. Mm. Should that be a concern? Because I know the devil is in the details, mm. and even budget distribution is different between these two areas. But it seems uh, the development beat is suffering a lot also from these uh, austerity measures. Actually, that is a problem that any time we have such a situation, we are in such a situation, the peop the, the, actually the part of the budget that suffers is the development budget, basically because it is about infrastructures. But one of the things that we need to actually understand is that we cannot grow a country if we have not developed the infrastructure that is supposed to be an enabler mm -hmm. for the for the for the for the for the growth that we are talking about and therefore when we have a 16 percent cut on the development budget the infrastructure budget then it means that we will actually have a problem of the growth of the country during that year because when you talk about development budget we are talking about roads mm -hmm. 
So we are talking about moving goods and services from wherever they are to the markets and all these other things. Yeah. So that tells you that we're still going to have a problem when it comes to the growth of the country during that year if some of those development budgets that we are cutting uh, development budgets that we are cutting are important in the growth and in the growth in the enabling of the growth of the country definitely yes uh, so a lot of questions what next now our public discourse and participation when it comes to public finances is at an all-time high mm. yeah and um, I know Dr. you teach, so yes. you are very familiar with uh, Gen Z's yes. and the injection and the pressure, yeah? Yes. Now everyone is keen. Mm. What next? We know the departmental committee is expected to engage the ministry, state department, and agencies uh, to review these supplementaries that have been uh, estimates that have been released. And thereafter, uh, I've just seen a notice that has been published on our dailies already uh, where Kenyans are being welcomed uh, to give uh, their feedback. Talk to me about the engagement now of Kenyans in matters public finance and what difference it, it can make even with this supplementary estimate number one for the financial year 2024-2025. No, I think one of the problems that we have in communication in this country is that the government is not really good in communication. I don't know why. Mm. Because you see, even now, people have actually been asking some of those questions. Mm -hmm. Now, because the finance bill was rejected, mm -hmm. what is going to happen? And you remember some people had, we had even discussion where people were just saying that they are just waiting for 15 days or 14 days or 21 days so that it can be law if the president has not assented. Because there is no communication, enough communication to tell the masses about what happens after. We have such a situation. Mm -hmm. Now the good thing is that because of the what has happened with Gen Z's, mm -hmm. people are very keen on what is going to happen there. Mm -hmm. And you might hear them talking about some of these cuts, especially for the development budget. They would actually want to know what you have actually done with in the development budget so that they critique and let me tell you, let me talk the truth that if you have a situation where people do not critique what you are doing, mm -hmm. then you have a problem. So I am so happy that Kenyans have an opportunity now to even look at that supplementary estimate and critique it, critique some of the, some of the areas, some of the budget cuts that we have, mm -hmm. some of the areas that the government has, uh, that the parliament will decide to reduce the money, and mm -hmm. also ask questions, why are you reducing? money on agriculture when you're talking about food security Definitely. and not reducing much more okay. in some of these areas that are not important in the country. Definitely. Yes. Dr. Terry, thank you very much for your time. Dr. David Kabata. I don't know whether you've heard that song, Anguka uh, that, that seems to be the song of the hour. It is the anthem. Uh, but uh, we try to be stable here. <laughs> yeah? you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dr. David Kabata. Uh, passionate lecturer, farmer, he does everything, and uh, also an analyst on matters public finance. And um, that's been our discussion. Remember that um, there is actually the estimates are already in Parliament. You're being urged to give your feedback, okay? This is according to, actually you can give your feedback. You can go to Fast Flow, yeah? Hand over your written feedback, for example. And this, we have a deadline before monday 22nd of july 2024 at 5 p.m uh you can give your feedback in regards to uh what do you think uh, are the changes that could be affected in the estimates uh number one for the 2024-2025 and how we're gonna spend or rather allocate our resources as a country now business today takes a short break uh we when we come back we'll be taking a look at a different discussion and this touches on payments in this country especially digital and inculcating easy payments. What is the impact to the economy? What are the challenges that the sector is facing? We'll be having that uh, discussion after our break. Stay tuned.